Okay, good evening, everyone. Um, I am covering section tonight on uh, SQL. And uh, first quest question I would like to ask is, what is SQL? Does uh, anyone know what SQL is? Uh, SQL stands for Structured Query Language, and it is a standard language used to query uh, relational da databases. What does it look like? It looks like uh, what you see in green. The first uh, green statement is actually a select uh, statement in SQL. And uh, in this example, we are selecting all the rows from a table called employees where an ID is equal to five. The second point in this, uh, in this illustration states uh, that it queries and alters relational databases. The reason why I mention alters is uh, the fact that uh, SQL does not only query the database as, it, uh, as its name intends, but it also um, does in, it d inserts data into the database, it modifies data, it deletes data, as well as uh, alters database uh, structures in the database. For example, it might add some new fields to a table or remove some fields or add a primary key, remove a primary key, add a foreign key, and so forth. Similarly, we have, uh, I've, I've uh, listed two SQL uh, examples for how it would alter or would query the database. Uh, when I say query, you would be most likely using the select command and uh, whereas alters could be uh, update, uh, insert, delete, drop, add, and so forth. Now, uh, these uh, relational databases are typically stored in a, a piece of software uh, that is named, uh, that is called the Relational Database Management System. And what this does typically is that it, uh, the, the RDBMS typically manages the relational database stored inside. So we would do tasks such as backups, uh, replication, and the like. The prominent, the prominent uh, RDBMSs out there are uh, MySQL, SQL Server, which is created by Microsoft, Oracle by Oracle, uh, MS Access, Microsoft Access, which is uh, obviously created by Microsoft. And um, the uh, last three that I mentioned are actually proprietary and uh, it, costs money to, it costs money to actually implement them, whereas MySQL is free. MySQL, that's how it's supposed to be said. So uh, in, in this class, we will be covering the MySQL relational database management system. And uh, in addition, we're, we're going to be using a, an application, a web application created in PHP to interface with this relational database management system. The web application which we will be using is actually called PHP MyAdmin. And I will cover this briefly and shortly. So, uh, what are the most used SQL com commands? There are, in my opinion, there are four uh, prominently used SQL commands. One is insert, uh, the other is update, delete, and select. Uh, think of, for example, navigating to Facebook. Uh, once you load the, the first page, you're, mo you're more than likely to encounter a select command on the database side. Select was going to go out and query information, which will be pulled out and rendered by the browser. Uh, insert uh, enters the data. So in this same example, let's say you, you posted a comment that's going to be inserted in the database. Uh, update will update an existing piece of data, for example. And delete will remove something. Let, let's say you're trying to remove a thread or an event and so forth, that would entail the usage of something like delete. So insert, update, uh, delete, and select are uh, four prominent SQL commands. And the second four that I find uh, important to mention, important enough to mention, are create, alter, add, and drop. Although there are still, there are several more SQL commands. But these, uh, I mention these in particular because they pertain to the database structure and what do I mean by this? Uh, I mean, uh, in the case of you wanting to create a database, for example, you would use the create uh, command in the case that you would like to create a, uh, 
a new table, you would use a create command. And for if you choose to, for example, alter a table, add some columns, remove columns, or add some constraints uh, or fields, you would use the add command. And lastly, the drop command um, is similar to a delete, but it uh, works on the database structure side. So a drop would, uh, would be used, for example, to remove a database, to remove a table permanently from your system, uh, or to remove constraints such as uh, indexes, uh, primary keys, foreign keys, and the like. Okay, so example time. I will uh, go ahead and pull up PHP my admin, which should be uh, included in your appliance. And the way to access it is simply to open a web browser and navigate to appliance forward slash PHP my admin. First thing you will notice is that you'll be prompted for a username and password. Uh, the appliance is configured in such a way that uh, the username is jharvard and the password is crimson. So this is the PHP my admin uh, web interface, which is uh, right now interfacing with the MySQL database uh, management system. I would like to mention that uh, right now we are, we are using the jharvard user, but for, for future usage and uh, post this class, if you choose to deploy your own databases and so forth, you, uh, I would advise that you create a separate user for um, each additional database uh, such that it will be, that security will be compartmentalized and uh, it's, much, it's much better for the long term, I think. Okay, so I'm going to briefly go over the, this interface, uh, although David kind of uh, touched on this in class. Uh, the databases um, tab enumerates or you know lists all the databases that, that are currently living um, in my, in your current installation of my SQL and this is also where you can actually create uh, a new database if I click on here for example uh, I can type a let's, let's say CS, CS 75 test would be the name of my new database. Uh, the collation is the character set uh, which this database will support. Uh, by character set, I mean like something like UTF-8. So for example, if, if this database were to um, store uh, Chinese characters, you, uh, the current uh, character set would not be able to support it. And so you would have to search through and find the appropriate character set. Uh, so the collation is, um, is first by default uh, defaults to Latin un one underscore Swedish underscore CI uh, with the current installation. And this cascades down to all the newly created tables inside this database, as well as all the newly created fields inside the database, all the new newly created columns. Fields and columns are the same thing, essentially. Though you can still, you can override this setting on the uh, database level, on the table level as well as on the field level. Okay. The next tab across is uh, SQL and here is where I can actually run um, SQL commands. I can um, and when I run a SQL command here and I click on go it will send that SQL command to the MySQL installation and then that will give me back uh, the resulting um, uh, output. Users is where you manage your users. Uh, export is where you can use you can use this feature to export your database out to perhaps another server. Um, import is the reverse of this, in that you can import uh, an existing database from somewhere. And for the most part, I'm not going to mention the re remaining items here. You fr uh, feel free to check them out. Okay. Let's go back to this side. 
So example time. Uh, in my example, I would like to keep track of uh, CS75 staff's CD collection. And this will uh, entail several steps. Uh, first off, we need to record each staff member's first name and last name. Then we need to record each CD's artist, uh, every CD's artist and title. And lastly, we need to record um, what CDs each staff member has and when it was acquired. Okay, so the first step, what would the first step be here? Would anyone like to participate? One thing before that. You're pretty close. Uh, one, he, uh, the question, so, so the, uh, the answer was create a table. And I had uh, mentioned that there's a, just one step before that, before you'd create a table. Okay, pretty, pretty, pretty close, but first off, we need to create a database. Because ultimately, this uh, uh, MySQL can, can store one or more databases. So let's give this uh, name, CS75. Uh, staff CDs. And we're going to leave the default, the collation to default, because for the most part, it will be using uh, Latin character sets. And so I click on create. Uh, I can go ahead and actually, I'm going to delete this and do it through the SQL line command, SQL command line, just for demonstrative purposes. So I'm going to issue a, okay, need to go back out here so I can have rights to do this. Drop database CS75 staff. CDs, and there you go. Now, I, now the database is gone. So I'm going to create the same database, but uh, using SQL this time. And uh, I will use the create command. So create, and then can anyone guess what the next word after this would be? Database. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the answer was database, and which is correct. <laughs> Create database, and then database name, CS75 staff CDs. And that's all I really need. And now I have my, my newly created database. OK, now on to the next step. And uh, someone had mentioned that we need to create a table. And yes, we do. We will create a table. Create, and uh, what comes after create? create table. table, exactly. Table name, Let's, uh, what, would, what should we call this table? Something that will be rep representative of uh, a, a table that, to that stores first name, last name, CD artist, CD title, and date acquired. Let's just, let's call it staff collections. And open parentheses, close parentheses. In other systems, I believe it's open curly brackets, close curly brackets, but uh, for this, it's parentheses. Uh, so in here, uh, we need to start actually enumerating the actual, or creating the, the fields that will uh, store the t different types of data that we like to keep. Uh, let's start with uh, the first column name, which is uh, first name. And uh, what data type w would you recommend us uh, using? Sorry? So the answer was Varchar. Sure, Varchar is a good candidate. And how many characters uh, should we be able to support? 30? 30 sounds reasonable. So first name, we're going to do the same thing with last name. And uh, CD artist, perhaps we could do the same with this. And CD title. 
lastly, date acquired and uh, what uh, type of, uh, what data type should this be or is preferable to be? Date. So there is a date, uh, there, is, there is a native date data type in MySQL. And so when I'm done with this, all I need to do is click on go. And you can see here under the CS75 staff CDs database, uh, a mention of staff underscore, underscore collections, which is the table we just had created. And I can click on this. Uh, when I click on this, uh, I can see every s each field and its corresponding values and meta values. The type uh, column specifies what uh, data type this is. The collation, uh, as I mentioned earlier, is the character set that this, um, this field will support. Again, I can override the system default and modify it to uh, the character, the collation of my choice. Uh, null, I'll just skip over attributes. Uh, null uh, specifies whether this, this uh, column can be empty or not. If, uh, if I say no, if I change this yes to no, then when I'm entering new data and I do not specify um, anything for this, it will er error out and will not let me insert the newly, uh, you know, the intended data. Default is the actual uh, default value that will appear each time I create a new uh, instance of, of this table. So if I create a new instance whereby there's a first name, last name, CD artist, CD title, and date acquired, if I say, for example, uh, I'm only going to be covering uh, a certain artist, and I, I can just put that artist name in here. I can uh, modify this to default to the artist title, and therefore, I would not have to input that artist title each time. But this is a very uh, unrealistic example. Uh, change uh, actually uh, is a is a GUI component to PHP My Admin, which will let you actually uh, which will let you change the metadata for this the different constraints and so forth for this field. Drop simply deletes this entire column, whatever column you're, you're, you choose, and I'm sure you could do more than one at the same time. Uh, browse distinct values will specify will enumerate. Uh, for let's uh, let's say for example we have three Davids or three Davids in this class, and if I click on browse distinct values, it will ultimately show me just one uh, David one time. It won't show it more than once. Primary key, the primary key command, the primary key uh, command will uh, will change the column to become a primary key. Uh, what is a primary key? Uh, it's actually one or more columns in your database that determine or de uh, determines or determine all the remaining columns. So for, for instance, in this case, can um, anyone suggest a primary key for this table? W is, there, is there a field or a column, one or more columns, put if, if we put them together, or like if, is there one column or more than one column that, if joined, would determine the remaining columns in this, logically speaking. So for example, if I put a first name, if I put first name as primary key, if I put, like, let's say David, uh, will it determine last name, CD artist, CD title, date required? Uh, absolutely not. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll cover this more in more detail a little later, but this is just uh, us visiting this uh, section. So I'm going to go ahead and start inputting some data in, in this table. Uh, does anyone know what command I should be using for this to actually input data inside the table, inside this table? Uh, insert. insert, correct. So insert, the, the, the syntax is insert into and the name of the table. And I go, I, I return to the next line because it's not, it is not going to affect anything, but it looks better visually. Insert into st uh, staff collections. Now I will need to enumerate the fields that I need to fill. So for example, if I only need to, if, I, if I'm creating a, a record here and I only want to add first name and last name and I, I do not know what CD they ha that person has 
or when it was acquired. I can just say, for example, insert into stack collections first name, last name, and then values. And I need to put the, the corresponding value in quotes. So the first value, the first value in parentheses will correspond to the first uh, field in those parentheses, in the first set of parentheses. Let's put David Malin. And this is, uh, the reason why I put a semicolon is so I could put some more commands later down in this page. For example, I could do another insert here, et cetera. So let's see what happens when I do this. Click on go. And it says one row inserted. If I click on staff collections, I can see that uh, for first name, uh, there's a mention of David, last name, uh, CD artist is null, CD title is null, data acquired is null. Let's go back here. I'm going to actually delete. Uh, now I would like to delete that record I just created. How can I delete this? Uh, does anyone know what command I can use? What SQL command I can use? Delete. So the answer is delete. So delete. Delete from. Delete from. Users. I mean, sorry. Staff. Collections. This. What this essentially says is delete all the records from this table. If I just say delete from, and the name of the table. Uh, when I have a much bigger table and I would like to delete some data, I can be a little bit more specific and put a clause like, like where something equals something else and so forth. But for, for this case, I can just use this because I only have one record. So I will click on go and one row deleted. And if I go to browse, I really don't have any more records in my table. Okay, so I'm going to actually insert some data into this table to make a, a point. Enter into, let's enter data for two or three people. Insert into staff collections. First name, last name. Now I'm, I will be entering more uh, information, more than last time at least. Data acquired, okay. Values, so David Malin. And for CD artist, I will put, let's say Michael Jackson, because I am familiar with him. Uh, thriller. And date acquired, uh, dates should be put in quotes. And one thing I would like to mention about dates, um, the way date is laid out in MySQL is that uh, your typical date format is month, day, year. But with MySQL, it's actually year, month, day. So when I enter the date here, I will need to put in, for example, 2012, 5, 5. So this is our first record. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to cookie cut it, pretty much. Paste it again, paste it again. I'll do one for me. And let's just change the song here. Let the let's say beat it. And one more person. OK. So now I'm ready to submit this. Uh, I'm, my plan is to submit three records into the database. I will click on Go. And if, if everything was successful, and it was, I should see. When I click on Browse, I should see all the data that I just inputted. Uh, 
Okay, can anyone see uh, an inefficiency in this design? See, the artist is repeated. That's taking up uh, space on uh, on disk storage. That's that's one thing. Another another disadvantage here is that uh, let's suppose that I have uh, I have 200 CDs and there are 10,000 of uh, there's a there are 10,000 rows to this table. If I have like let's say 10 CDs and I change my name, this would entail my going into the database and locating each single instance where my name is mentioned and changing my name. That's another disadvantage. Lastly, uh, let's suppose that I would like to delete, uh, let's, let's suppose that I would not, I would like to not include myself in this table. I would like to delete myself. So if I go ahead and delete this, what ends up happening is, well, it's going to prompt me, but what will end up happening in terms of information is that I will also be deleting the CD artist and CD title, leaving no mention of it. So those are at least three disadvantages we have with this structure. And so what we need to do is uh, pursue a process called database normalization, and which, uh, which I encourage you to research. Uh, by normalizing the data, you're actually reducing or eliminating redundancies and inefficiencies in terms of the structure of your data. What I will do now is I will delete everything I just did and start from scratch. Uh, to adhere to the relational database, uh, relational database normalization principles. So I click on SQL, and I would like to delete this table. Okay, how can I delete this table? What what do I type now? Drop. 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 Okay. Drop, and then table. Table name. And I will click on Go. There we go, it's gone. All right. Okay, so how do we move forward from here? What, how can I make this uh, efficient? There are, sorry, what was that? Connect the tables. Sorry, I can't hear you. Make two tables. Make two tables? Sure, sure. Make two tables is a good recommendation. So uh, what, what can I put in the first table? What uh, information, what type of information at least? Okay. Uh, so uh, the, the answer was information about staff, and which is um, pretty good. So create, I will go ahead and issue a command, create table, and let's call this table staff. Okay, uh, I need to cover first name, put the varchar30, last name, varchar30 as well. Am I missing anything here? Do you, got, do you see the need for anything additional in this? Maybe a, a stop ID or something. Okay, a primary key, sure. Let's go ahead and put ID, and this will be an integer. Uh, we're, we won't be having too many people here, so let's just give it a length of four, which means it can accommodate up to 9,999, that number. Okay, so I will delimit this with the semicolon, and I'll create a new table as well. So staff is covered, and for the purpose of this uh, example, what other information do I still need? Collections, but what, what, what do collections entail in this case? Uh, we're collecting CDs, so. Artist name, album name. Exactly. So artist name, album name, that's. So let's do artist, or chart 30, and title.
Okay, and we still need a primary key here. So let's do the same as we did earlier. In ID int4, comma. And we can click on go. Excuse me, sorry. Oh, there you go, good point. Good observation. Let's call this CDs. And let's go ahead and click on go. So now I have two tables. One is called CDs and one is called staff. Although I, s I included this to be a primary key, it's still not a primary key yet. So I can do this by clicking on the primary key uh, image or link, or I can go into SQL. Let's create a primary key for CDs. I can say alter table, the name of the table, which in this case is CDs. Uh, add primary key, and in parentheses the name of the field, the name of the column which I would like to have as primary key, which is ID. And I want to do the same with the staff table. Yeah. If I look at the structure now, you can notice that uh, ID is underlined, which uh, means that, which signifies ID being a primary key. And there's just one more thing I need to do to this uh, column. Does anyone know what this thing is? Or what I, what I need to do left to the primary key? Think of inserting new data and so forth. By default, primary keys are not null and uh, they're indexed and uh, unique as well. So auto-incremented. You, you had mentioned that, but that was the last on your list. <laughs> All right, so I would click on, on, um, on this and actually change it. Click on change. Here I'm going to put none for default value because it will not have any default values. And I will check AI, A underscore I. Click on save. And so now each time uh, a value, a, a new name, first name, and last name is inserted into this table, we will, uh, the system will generate a new ID based on the last uh, used ID. So if the last ID was one, the next ID will be two. Uh, if you have three people, so with IDs one, two, and three, and you delete ID, the one with ID three, the next, the next uh, inserted user will not have an ID of three. It will have the ID of four. So it just checks for the last number used. It does not care what what's available, what, what's actually been used in the table or not. And I will do the same thing now for the staff table. I'll make sure it's auto-incremented. Okay. So now we have a CDs table and a staff table. How can we uh, record what CDs uh, a certain individual has, certain one of our st individual from our staff members. Okay, so the answer is uh, we need to create a new table that associates a staff member with a certain uh, CD that the staff member owns. And I will create a table and call it collections. So create table. Table name is collections. And let's see, um, let's see what columns this should have based on efficiency and what we really need from this. Staff ID, Staff ID is one. Actually, staff ID is an integer, and it should be four uh, digits long. And what else? C D. Someone mentioned C D ID, which is which is correct. C D ID because C D ID will, uh, will ultimately identify the C D artist and title in that other table. And these are uh, what we call foreign keys. 
logically these are foreign keys, but uh, they're not technically foreign keys and that we need to issue commands to make them foreign keys. And th that th there's a whole discussion to that. If you'd like to research more on this, uh, look up referential integrity and what that entails. Uh, in, our, in, in MySQL, we have two, uh, we're going to cover basically two database engines. One is MyISAM and the other one is InnoDB. Uh, InnoDB, I-N-N-O-D-B, will support uh, foreign key constraints or foreign keys, and my ISAM will not. Okay, so there is one more thing I need to put in here, which I had mentioned previously in the, in the inefficient example. There's one, there's one more column. Data acquired? That is correct. So data acquired, which is essentially a date, value, date field, date, data type field. Okay, now I will click on go. Do, uh, are we missing anything here? So I went ahead and created the table. This is the structure of the table. Where is it? Collections. And this table does not have a primary key. So what is the primary key for this table? What field or fields determine the remainder of the table, the remaining values? Sure. So in this case, uh, for example, if we have a certain staff ID, staff ID will not determine CD ID and date acquired. CD ID will not determine staff ID and date acquired. And date acquired will not determine staff ID and CD ID. In this case, we need to, to form what is called the composite primary key. Composite primary key is that uh, which is formed by uh, more than one, uh, at least two uh, fields, two or more fields. So the, the composite key here would be staff ID and CD ID. So given a certain staff member and given a certain CD that one could purchase, so let's say I purchase a certain CD it's impossible for me to have purchased the CD uh, on two different dates at the same time. Other, uh, only it, it might happen in a parallel universe, but for now, uh, if I purchase a, a CD, if I if I purchase a CD on a certain date, that's I, I can't have more than one of that date. So I will form these two as a composite key. And the way to have two primary keys, and I'm not sure you can do this here in in mice in uh, PHP my admin directly or at least I don't know how to do it so you go to the SQL command line alter table collections add primary key and then it'll be staff ID comma CD ID and I click on go If I click on structure, you can see that they're both underlined now, which means that jointly they form a primary key. Okay, on to the uh, fun part, which is filling out the data. I have already created some, just before class, I created some SQL commands to insert some data. Let's do this one. So let's run this. We're going to insert four, uh, four CD, four titles for Michael Jackson. Open up. Click on go. Now if I look into my CDs, I can see that it, the system uh, automatically generated the sequential IDs for me. And it inputted the artist and title. 
in case you didn't notice what the commands look like, I basically inserted into CDs artist and title. I did not mention ID here because the system will generate, generate that for me automatically. And then I give it the corresponding values. So now I'll do the same thing with with this tab. Except that I haven't used gedit. Let me see. There we go. Okay, so I'm inserting into staff a first name, the values for first name and last name for our staff members. And click on go. If I hit on browse, I can see that, uh, well, that we've mentioned this before. I can see that all of our staff members are inside the table now, uh, each with a unique ID. Okay, lastly, I will insert our collections. Okay, so what this essentially does is it takes, if you, if you notice that I'm only using the staff ID and CD ID for each entry, and followed by the acquisition date. I'm not using any first names, last names. So your, uh, for, for future applications that you write, you will need to somehow know what ID the, you, you need to, that, needs, that needs to be used in your queries to be entered in, uh, in your insert queries and so forth. Okay, so now I have my collections table filled with staff ID, CD ID, and date acquired. And if, let's suppose I delete this entry, which, is, which could mean, for example, my ID could be one. If I delete this, this only means that this entry is deleted. My name remains intact here. And the CD, the mention of the CD is still here and, and under CDs. Okay, now I'd like to move over to the last command I will cover tonight, which is the select command. The select command, which, is, which essentially queries the database, asks the database for the database management system for information from it. And it is a ve very flexible command. You can do so many things with it. Uh, let's, uh, let's try something very simple. Select uh, star from staff and I will explain what this means if I click on go it basically shows the entire table select uh, means query the database star is all fields all columns from what table would I like to get this information from? This table called staff. So it showed me everything, all the columns, all the rows for all the columns from the table staff. Now, if I wanted just to see first name, I could put select first name from staff. And if I click on go, I will only see the first name here. And if I put select first name as first name, to make it visually more appealing from staff. You can see here that the header, header column is called first name as I changed it in the query. Similarly, I can put clauses in the select command. So let's say for select first name from as for uh, as first name from staff. Let's put a clause in here, where 
ID equals four. So this should only fetch the row where uh, ID, the value of ID is equal to four from the staff table. And I can see that first name Chris has an ID of four. And there are some more uh, sophisticated functions you could do with select, but for the scope of this class, um, I don't think we will be covering them, like nested queries and other things, among other things. You can do something like select star from staff, where first name, like, and percentage sign is wildcard, for example. Wildcard, wildcard, let's say AL. I want AL in the middle of the word. And this should give me something like this. This is my name, because it has AL in it somewhere. Okay, so now I have, I have uh, three tables. I have a CDs table, staff table, and a collections table. Let's try to make uh, some uh, meaningful queries given the three tables. So let's suppose I want to see, that I would like to see uh, each staff member's CD collection or what, what they've purchased or what, what they've acquired. I will run a, SQL com a select command, select, uh, first name, last name, artist, title, and date acquired from, okay, so fr from what tables do I need to bring these results from? Okay, staff, what else? CDs. Any more? And collections, correct. Uh, one thing I would like to note here is that I typically you would use the table name dot column name. Like here I should, I should be using staff dot first name, but since first name is, on, is unique only to that table, if I, I don't have it in any other tables, since it is unique to that table, I can use it without uh, using the actual table uh, operator before it. And lastly, I need to do one more thing, which is, uh, which is Chris will mention in more detail in next, sec next session, next section uh, is a join, but I will do a join in a in kind of a different way. I will, not using the I will not be using the keyword join. So here we need to actually join the tables in that uh, I need to make sure that the ID from the collection, the CD ID from the collections table corresponds to the CD ID from the CDs table. So I need to put something like this here, where collections, sorry, what just happened here? Where collections dot CD ID equals to CDs dot ID and collections dot staff ID equals to staff dot ID. And if I go ahead and click on go, now this makes, this kind of has some value to us. I can see people's names along with the artist title and the, when it was acquired. Now you can notice that these are not too friendly, the headers, the header uh, labels. So what I can do here is use, again, use as, as first name. This is the actual label that will appear in the resultant set. Last name, artist, let's just keep it the same, and date acquired as date acquired. And you can see that this is reflected here. It looks much more elegant. Well, I could, I could have done the same thing with artist and title. There's some more things I could do with uh, 
SQL, with, with, I mean with a select statement. Let's say we want to uh, find out how many CDs ev each staff member has. What I could do here is, let's delete everything. I can select first name, last name, and uh, SQL has some functions like count, max, which finds the maximum value count, which counts the, the uh, occurrences of a certain value. So here I would like to count dimensions of collections.staffid, which uh, logic logically speaking, if you're mentioned in the, uh, the collections table, it means that you have, uh, each time you're mentioned in the collec collections table, it implies that you have at least that many, number, that many number of CDs. So if I'm mentioned six times in the collection table, it means I, I have at least six CDs, or I have six CDs, based on that information. And with the count function, you need to uh, actually use a group by clause at the very end. Group by um, groups certain values together under the same. Uh, so instead of having me mention three times, it would, it would just mention me one time. So group by collections dot staff ID again. And this may be a little bit beyond the scope, scope of this course, but I'd like to show you what, how useful this can, uh, how, how useful SQL can be. Just copy it. So I query this, and you can see here that this tells us how many CDs each individual has. Okay, does anyone have any questions on anything that I mentioned so far from SQL to database structures to the example? Well, typically in, in uh, the, the, so the question is, are there any tools out there that take an existing uh, data set or data structure and uh, I guess converts it or gives suggestions to uh, how to normalize the database? I believe there are tools in, um, in the actual relational database management systems themselves that would make recommendations for you. But ultimately, it's, it's uh, in the end, at the end of the day, it's a, it's a computer thinking for you, so it's best that you do it yourself if you want to apply the, the, the right tenets of rela relational database design. But yes, there are, there are um, um, systems that will re make recommendations for you and might do it for you as well. Any other questions? What, sorry, what was the last part of your question? I mean, I think it's a uh, change to the top part of the database because... Oh, so the question is, can, can we change the character set of the database after it has been created? Is that that's your question? Right. The answer is yes. Character set. Right. The, the collation, right? Yeah. The collation, like the, the, the character set. Yes, the answer is yes. You can, I can go ahead right now and I'll show you how. Let's suppose I go into structure and uh, data acquired, where is it, collation? Oh, okay, so this is data acquired. I can go ahead and change it to ASCII general. I just picked one by, by randomly. That's it, and I changed it. And if I look at the data of collections, it still looks the same. So unless you're uh, unless you're already in a character set that doesn't have an equivalent for it in, in the other character set, you're not going to see a difference. But if this were, for example, an, if, if I initially had my, my database uh, storing Chinese characters, and then I decided to change it to Latin, right? You, you're probably going to see a bunch of question marks down for the, for the Chinese values once you convert it. But it will not change anything otherwise. I mean, it's fine. You can do it. Any more questions? Good. 
So I guess we could we can conclude this session. And uh, well, before I go, actually, let me mention one thing on the PowerPoint on the presentation. So recommended things to research. Uh, I do recommend, I know you're working hard on your project zero right now, but when you do have time, I do recommend that you research certain things. Uh, MySQL data types, because you will be working with uh, MySQL, MySQL, I keep saying it wrong. MySQL in the next project, so I recommend that you visit those, uh, the different data types that it supports and what each does. Uh, primary key and foreign key constraints, uh, don't stress too much on the foreign, on the actual constraints and some that's, uh, themselves, but it would be good for you to understand what primary key and foreign key, what each means, and so that you can conceptually apply them, even albeit not in the uh, technical sense, as I mentioned earlier, like using through the through the database engine. You might not be able to, depending on which database uh, uh, engine you choose to go with. The third thing that I recommend you research is normalization. And when you're, when you're doing your research on normalization, again, you don't want to spend too much time on it, but enough time to understand to how you can reach the third normal form. The, because in, in normalization, there are different norm, uh, normal forms. Again, this is beyond the scope of this class, but I think third normal form would su suffice for now. Uh, lastly, the SQL commands we mentioned today, uh, select, uh, put, put some focus on select, insert, uh, delete, and update, because these are uh, the commands that you'll be mostly using in your code to manipulate the data. You, it's, it is very unlikely that you will be using create, alter, add, and drop. Uh, they probably won't be even used at all in your projects, but uh, these these are the more prominent ones that, that will be more used. And as always, uh, if you have any questions, you can visit cs75.net forward slash discuss, and we'll be there to assist you. But one more thing. I know I didn't go through, I mentioned everything with the exception of updates. The update command, before I go. So the update command basically uh, updates uh, a target, uh, updates information for a target of your choice inside a certain table. Let's suppose that I would like to update my name from the staff table. So I can say update, and the, the syntax for this is update a table name set I'll put it on the next, next line just so it looks good. Set, uh, and then the column name, let's say let's first name. I would like to set first name to, I would like to, uh, my name to be in all, cap all caps, where, uh, I don't know, my, I do not know what my ID is, but let's just say where first name, like, it's it looks like, I mean, it starts with, or it has this this the following sequence, A, L, A, and then whatever happens. So these, the percentage sign here could be zero or many characters. So when I run this command, what should happen, one, one row is affected. What I should see happen here is, oh, it's under staff. You can see now that my name is capitalized. I could have essentially done where ID equals to two, but I didn't know my ID, and I didn't feel like going back. Uh, does anyone have any questions about update, or would you like to see an example of, a, of an update, insert, select, delete, just to shed light, some more light on this? All good? Okay. Okay. Any questions over there? No, you're good? Okay. So I guess we can conclude this session. And uh, uh, next, in, in our next section, uh, Chris Gerber will be covering uh, some more 
concepts in uh, SQL, and such as indexes, uh, transactions, commits, so forth. And thanks, thank you, everyone.